Let me run this scenario by you. Let's say you're the drummer of a band, and you're in the studio recording, and halfway through recording, you mess up. What do you do? Do you keep going and hope no one notices, or do you stop and restart? Or do you yell f <laughs> Well, there's a band from the 60s called The Kingsmen who did just that. Their drummer was recording their song, and he messed up midway through, and he yelled f and they left it in the recording. Let's take a listen to this together. I haven't actually listened to this yet. <laughs> heard it, I heard it, I, 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 F-bomb alert. Did you guys hear it? It's really, it's really off in the distance, but you can hear <laughs> I don't know, it kinda, kinda sounds a little like yeah, no, I would have been pretty pissed if this were my band. I would have dragged the drummer out by the nipples and hang out, hang out. <laughs> Dropping F-bombs in the middle of recording. <laughs> now there's a huge mistake in Roxanne by the police. And apparently it was caused by Sting's ass. All right now, just before the two second mark, we're going to hear an accidental piano note and then Sting laughing. Let's listen. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? Let's listen again. You hear that? So what we're hearing there is Sting accidentally sitting on a piano during recording, and then he laughs about it. <laughs> <laughs> My ass is a terrible pianist. Haha, <laughs> don't like that sentence. I gotta figure out that chord. <laughs> yes, yeah, right around here. If you may notice a brown mark on these keys, it's cause Sting's ass was there. It was right around here. All the notes are right next to each other, which would be consistent with an ass cheek. Let's see if we can re-replicate this. I'm gonna pretend that I'm Sting on the night of recording. And on his over, you don't have to say about it to my ass. But I think the funniest part of all is in the album liners of this album, Sting is credited as playing butt piano. So they apparently thought this was hilarious, probably why they left it in the song and didn't delete it. My question is this, how does one exactly sit on a piano accidentally? Oh, I sat on this air hoop. Oh my goodness, I could be so clumsy. Oh, Sting. I sat on the saxophone. Oh, I sat on this accordion. I could be so oh. oh, would you believe it? I sat on my bass player. <laughs> now, this isn't the first time that someone's ass has made an appearance on a recording. In an early recording by the Beatles, Paul McCartney held a microphone up to his ass and farted <laughs> just to be funny. And they left it in the song. Now you have to listen really, really closely. It's very, very hard to hear, but at four seconds in, you can hear it. Oh, bloody hell, quite the little piffle, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry I made that one up, but this next one is actually true. And it's in the song, Hey Jude. In one part of the song, Paul McCartney misses a piano chord or something, and he handled it like a true English gentleman by saying, F***ing hell. All right, listen closely. Under your skin, then you begin. Did you hear that? Oh, hell. It's all right, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what he's saying. Begin, begin. F***ing hell. Okay, yeah, dude, I guess he's, uh, he's saying F***ing hell. I mean, I, I don't hear a mess up that would warrant a f hell. I mean, who knows, maybe Sting came up and like played the Paul's piano with his ass. Oh, f hell. You know, I, I have to remember that these songs were recorded in like the 60s and 70s when you couldn't just click the delete button. They were recording probably reel to reel, which means that if they wanted to cut something out, they literally had to physically cut it. So maybe that's why they left it in there, because they're like, well, I'm not spending an hour to get rid of that f The radio's gonna have to like it. Now this next one actually kind of blows my mind. But in the song, Why Can't We Be Friends by War, the very intro has a bad keyboard note that they left in the recording. You don't have to listen hard to hear this one, it's very noticeable. <laughs> oh! Dun, 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 dun. I would have never left that in the song. Sting's ass plays better piano than that. 
that's a bad note. That is bad. If they knew the song was going to be a huge hit, they might have cut that out. But apparently the band liked the unpredictableness and dissonance of the jazzy chords. But from what I'm hearing, it sounds more like a f*** up. I gotta replicate that note. Yeah, he hit that note right there. Like, this note is all the way over here. I don't know how he messed that up. Why can't we be friends? But what do I know? The song was a massive hit, but that note was a massive sh Now, Pink Floyd in their song, Wish You Were Here, also has a mistake in there that I can't believe they would just leave in there. During the intro, you can audibly hear David Gilmore coughing, apparently because he was a chronic smoker. Let's take a listen to this one. Hopefully this one's a little easier to notice. What the? That wasn't a cough, that was a... <laughs> that was David Gilmore spontaneously combusting from the inside out. Like, I was expecting a... <clears throat> not a... <laughs> but apparently David Gilmore was not happy with this. Upon hearing himself in the recording, he apparently quit smoking cold turkey. And I guess if I heard myself going in a recording, I probably would quit smoking too. But David Gilmore isn't the only person with an audible cough in their recording. In Rolling Stone's Manchester Beat, you can hear Keith Richards coughing. Pay attention closely to about the three second mark and you'll hear his coughing. It's very hard to hear, so listen closely. <coughs> Keith? <coughs> Keith? <coughs> How are you still alive? <laughs> I'm sorry I made that one up, I couldn't resist. But let's be honest, it's surprising that Keith Richards doesn't cough in a song. Now this next one is an REM song called The Sidewinder Sleeps Tonight. Never heard it, but apparently Michael Stipe in the recording laughs at himself because he can't pronounce Dr. Seuss. Let's take a listen. Reading from Dr. Seuss, come try to wake her. Definitely sounded like Michael Stipe was laughing at himself, but it sounded like he pronounced Dr. Seuss just fine to me. Dr. Seuss! Dr. Seuss! I don't know, it's not that weird. Apparently he pronounces it Dr. Zeus. That's why he laughed, but I don't hear it. Dr. Seuss! Come on, you try to wake <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I do enjoy his laugh, though. Dr. Seuss! <laughs> It's like someone give him a little tickle, tickle, tickle. Beneath, I'll move on. You know, guitarists and singers just can't get along, can they? As demonstrated by the 1982 song Eminent, Eminent, <laughs> Dyslexic. Eminence Front by The Who. In the first chorus, Roger Daltrey and Pete Townsend are both singing lead. But apparently they did not read from the same teleprompter because they each had different timing and said different things. Completely accidental. Let's listen. What the hell was that? I mean, that's my my thought, thought. Did you hear that? It, one of them goes, Eminence front, and the other one goes, Did Pete Townsend have a stroke? <laughs> Man, it's a good thing they didn't let Pete Townsend sing on their other songs. Out here in the field. Field. Oh, would you shut? Your timing is absolute ass! Now this next one I, I'm just really excited about. I, this guy burps in the middle of his song. And they left it in there. This is a George Ezra song, Shotgun. Feeling like you're someone. With South. Nice, very nice consistency. That was a very nice burp. They made it part of the song, they almost turned it into a synth. South. <laughs> like if you didn't know that was a burp, you would think it was like a synthesizer or something. A burpicizer. South. That being said, this man is a huge artist. Burping unapologetically in your own material is immature and pathetic. <laughs> Now this next song's a 
fun one, Barbara Ann by the Beach Boys. A ba 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 Barbara Ann. <laughs> Sorry, but there's a mistake in the last verse that I swear to God the producer was probably ready to shoot every member of this band because they cannot sing in sync and none of them can remember the lyrics and they just record a jumbled mess of poopery and they left it in the song. Let's take a listen. <laughs> wow. Go home, Beach Boys. You're drunk. <laughs> now apparently they were actually all pissed drunk. Go figure. But I, uh, why would they leave that in the song though? That is embarrassing. I, I guess they were trying to go for like a fun vibe, but this is more of a drunken stupor, can't remember our lyrics <laughs> vibe. Like, could you imagine the look on the producer's face when they recorded this? <laughs> I'm sure that's not all the mistakes in famous songs. If you have any that I missed, leave them in the comment section. If you hate me, call me out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Love you guys.